Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Broken Roads with me, Bregaton. Let's continue exploring Meriden. Thanks close for now, mate. Probably best if you don't loiter around. I hate to get all suspicious on you. You wanna go? Guess I can't talk to either one of you. Fair enough. Hey, twins! I stay out of trouble while you're in Meriden. The other siders should just screw off. There's plenty of space out there. Yeah, but it's Australia. Jackaroos and Jillaroos. I've got the tools you need. Come on, Jackaroo. Can't shop with you. Jimmy Wen. He tugs on the collar of his tartan shirt, whistling a slow, calming tune. He nods when he spots you. Good day. Name's Jimmy Wen. Here to see the water tower? Is that water tower yours? It's part of my lineage. But it belongs to Meriden. It was built a long time ago. But it's been at least 15 years since it's seen any action. Bye. See ya. The slender, mousy haired woman stares with venomous hatred at the shovel at her feet nursing her hand. She's muttering to herself. Why do they put me out here? What's the point? Is this punishment for... She breaks off when she sees you. Oh, I beg your pardon. I... I didn't see you there. How may I be of assistance? His last words have bitten off a mechanical, spoken as if by hated rote. Who are you? She looks at you morosely. I've been told I'm not allowed to talk to strangers, especially if they don't know who I am. Jasper says good servants don't draw attention to themselves. He doesn't turn away, though. He's obviously hoping you'll know who she is. Is your name Lisa? Nope. Is your name that one pronounced Noel, but written like JKMN? He pinches the bridge of her nose. Obviously not. Is your name... Mondigliana? I'm not that fancy. Come on. She sighs and crosses her arms. Quit it, alright? You're not gonna guess. I'm just gonna be in trouble if you keep hanging around. Just... Come back when you actually know my name. Okay? <laughs> I still don't know your name. She presses her lips together. And that's still not my problem. Bye. Ha. Huh. So the JKMN joke is because there's no L, that's why it's announced no L. It's a terrible joke. So I understand why she didn't like it. Never be caught off guard by a red back on the loo again. Keep our spider bite solutions nearby. The young man at the cart looks like a veteran of countless scrapes. Scars up and down his arms and around his face. Missing teeth, bad tattoos, the works. He summons a hideous smile as you approach. Good day, mate. Wilkins is the name. Food's the game. Hungry? You've come to the right place. What's your pleasure? What do you have in stock? He starts taking off a list on his fingers. 
Berry bread with broiled honey ants. Chalky bicky, only it hasn't got actual chalk in it. Fresh made yeasty spread from Holly's kettle. Anzac bickies, roux steak. Camel milk, some dog. He scratches his head. Carrots. Can't forget the carrots. And then something else. Don't remember what it was. I'll take the something else. Yeah, okay. Don't be a jerk, eh, mate? Tip of me tongue. Gonna drive me mad until I remember it. What brought you to Meriden? Town full of rich Juan. Well-bred folks. Big old gates surrounding the town. Merchandise that gets guarded by people on camels. With guns. He seems especially excited about that last point. What's not to love? Let's trade. Right, a metaphysics of morals. Innocence is indeed a glorious thing. Only, on the other hand, it is very sad in that, that it cannot well maintain itself and is easily seduced. And a radio. Keeps you in touch with civilization no matter where you are in the outback. I'll take one of these. Is it considered junk? It's not. Bye. Come back any time. I'll do you right. It'd be nice to be able to afford a whole steak one day. Just once. Sorry, Hudson. He bows slightly, eyes darting around. Hi. You doing okay out here? He wipes sweat off his brow. Not really. Mom's got a baby on the way. They still won't let her go in. I can't do any manual labor to earn a century either, because of my leg. He kicks at the ground. We should have stayed at St. John's. I'd like to see what you have in stock. That seems really good for 2,000 doubloons, sure. A brown canvas vest. Show off that muscle. Grants plus one agility. I want that camo outback cat real bad. Keeps the sun out of your eyes. Boosts plus two AP and plus two MP. And a crowbar. Can open doors and tinnies in a pinch. $2,000. Oh, I know where to buy it. Bye. Have a good day, mister. She rubs her back, exhaling deeply. Good day. I'm Claire. This heat sure doesn't let up, eh? She chuckles. I wish I could help you get inside the city. She gives you a determined look. Don't you worry about us. I'll see him inside safe and sound. If it's the last thing I do. Stay safe out there. New permanent marker. The ones that haven't dried up are used to mark cattle tags, property, or your bill at the pub. And paper. Use the light fires, wrap up your produce, or wipe your butt in a pinch. And daisies. A lovely bunch of daisies. Oh, and pens. Also new. An assortment of pens. Most of the ink is dried. Looks like a couple of them could still be used for writing. Just rummage through this person's tent. The camp stretches off into the distance. Tents blending with a haze of red dust 
picked up by the restless wind. I do wish these old inspection points, the text would stay up a little longer. Goes away a bit too quickly. In my humble but correct opinion. Keep moving. We're not animals to be gawked at. Trying to see if anyone needs help. Thanks, popping out cube poos the size of hand grenades. <laughs> Look at him wiggling around. Look at this lovely little creature. A hunting knife plus two. I haven't even used the first one yet. The possum tails. Fuzzy tails are soft to the touch. Gray kangaroo pelts. The pelts have been expertly cleaned. Red kangaroo pelts. Same description. Red kangaroo meat. Pop this onto your plate for a fair dinkum meal. Stores five hit points. Well, I think I can afford... This. I've got to sell a couple things. Start with the junk, of course. And if I sell my knife... What does my knife go for? So, yeah. Obviously, I would sell this for the upgraded knife. I still can't afford it. Oh, it's 360. I don't know why I thought it said 260. Alright, I'm not going to sell anything else, so just hold off on that for now. Alright, looks like we've made a clear pass around town. I don't think we can go up this way, can we? We'll try it. Now we can't get back here. I think we did go all the way up here, but we'll double check. This godly dressed gentleman clearly likes to be the center of attention, but he has a kind face and piercing eyes. His voice is like liquid gold. Deep, mellow, and rich. Hello there, strangers. My name's Adam Gold, traveling magician, a Q charlatan, revving rock and tear, or sorry, rock and tour, and general entertainer. In other words, I like to tell a good story, put on a good show. I like to say I'm as entertaining as hell, but a rotten egg or two will convince any sane man that his work's not everyone's cup of tea. He brushes some imaginary lint off his sleeve, and finally takes a breath. But I have a trick or two that might be of interest. Step right up, as they used to say. And I step left up. That's something I would say. Can a toucan do the can-can? Come on up, friend. Also, I am massive compared to all these other people. He turns to the rest of the small crowd. A round of applause for our brave volunteer. How much does a traveling magician make? About as much as anyone else. He shrugs. You may have noticed that entertainment is short on the ground these days. I provide laughs, mystery, and wonder. People will pay for that. Though not, he mutters darkly, as much as they should. That's where the traveling comes in. Once a town has seen enough of magic, once the wallets have run dry, it's time to move on. Give them time to forget. Now how and why did a stage magician come to Meriden? Meriden's the capital of West Oz, of course. The beating economic heart, eh? There are some sizey stops east of here, sure. Southern Cross and Kalgoorlie? And that lot. For the western bit, you can't beat Meriden. I go where the money is. I stick around, provide some entertainment, 
keep the people amazed and confounded, and head out before they can accuse me of witchcraft. He pauses for thought. Which happens more often than I'd like, if I'm being honest. Tell me a trick. I was going to wait until the crowd was a little bigger, but... Alright. Just for you. He dips his right hand into his coat pocket and emerges holding a large golden coin. Watch carefully, mate. Prepare to be amazed. The coin dances across the knuckles of his right hand while he pulls out a handkerchief with his left. He wipes his brow theatrically as he opens his right hand and drops a coin into his palm. He closes his fist around the coin and protects the fabric into the top of his hand. He pulls the handkerchief through his fist, shakes it loose, and opens his palm. There's no coin. Where did it go, eh? Hang on a tick. He reaches up behind your ear with his left and pulls the coin free. Ta-da! That was pretty good. Wait till you see the next one. Alright, show me another trick. This one will knock your socks off. Guaranteed. Three balls. Watch carefully. He pulls three red balls from another of his voluminous pockets and begins juggling. Saint's magic is the art of misdirection. I draw your attention one place while I do the trick with another. He starts juggling one-handed and with his left hand reaches into his coat. Watch this. He throws a spray of glitter into the air and as the red balls rise into the glitter, they vanish without a trace. He extends his arms and bows, stuffing his hands into his pockets. He sniffles a bit and dabs at his nose with the handkerchief he used in his first trick. How did you do that? He smiles enigmatically. A true master never reveals his secrets. Perhaps someday you'll figure it out. A more, more tricks. He smiles regretfully. You have to wait for the real show. I'm planning to open it up after the election debate. For now, you're welcome to kick in some cash. I do need to eat, even if I am made of magic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to take the exposure option. Yeah. Hope everyone enjoys that as much as I did. Here's five dollars. He beams. An appreciative audience. Ah, huh, mate. Well, I gotta keep prepping. Unless you need something else. Bye. Have a magical day. Right, good to see you again, mate. Can't talk to the crowd. Playing bit is big is coming. I can feel it. Hogan's not in charge. We'll be dead meat. It's not broken. Don't fix it. Give Angela another ten years, I say. Ten years. Long time for a governor to be in charge. This town smells like crap. The dump in one direction. Emu farm in the other. I see this vendor. Sunflowers. Flowers of the sun. Roses. Don't get pricked by its thorns. <laughs> uh, peas. Eat your greens, they're good for you. Restores 5 hit points. And a win. She looks around the marketplace anxiously. She spots you and puts on a tired smile. Sorry, did you need something from House Wen? I'm Anna, Jimmy's wife. But what do you do? She gestures to the house behind her. I'm usually knee deep in paperwork, managing our water business. I've been doing fractions since I was an ankle biter. So Jimmy was more than happy to have me work with the numbers while he did all the talking. How did you and Jimmy meet? She laughs wistfully. Before I settled down on Meriden, I was the brains behind a barter crew operation up north. I had to travel to Meriden one time to settle some trade disputes we had, and I met Jimmy at the gla gala. He wasn't a part of any dispute, mind you. I just thought he was hot. We tried long distance for a time, but it was hard, you know? So I moved on down to Meriden to keep our business in check and become a wife. She beams. Bye. Have a good one. One house.
All right, looks like we have now made our rounds around town. I was going to continue up this way to make sure. Nothing else to see up here. I do think I should go into a couple of these houses before we talk to Mick and Angela. Now I'll start with the Menzies house because I believe we can enter that one up here on the stairs. What is it? You seem a little stressed. This isn't easy, you know. Why doesn't anybody in this town keep records of anything? Well, besides me. She shuffles some of the papers on her desk. Without any official documentation, how am I supposed to forecast whether we should raise interest rates on indentured servants' debt or lower them? People are going to be angry either way, then to make sure the decision is worth the time I'll spend defending it. Uh, what's an indentured servant? An indentured servant is someone who has committed crimes against Meriden's populace and been sentenced to pay back a specified debt through labor. I pride myself in managing the Dedos and their debts, just like my grandmother did with the initial generation of Dedos. Okay, so they're not people that... I assume the indentured servants in Meriden were people that wanted in the town and... Uh, went into debt for that, not for committing a crime. Now, what do you mean by the initial generation of Dedos? She looks at you thoughtfully. The first generation of Dedos were the people who breached Meriden's walls. We fended off the attack and took the survivors hostage. We put up notices demanding a ransom and sent our people to the closest settlements with the same information. But when it became clear no one was coming to rescue them, we put them to work. They had children, their children had children, and slowly but surely, they paid their debt to our fine society. Are the children also indentured servants? Because that, I don't agree with that at all. As she smiles at a fond memory. Some Dedos have even earned their freedom. They stand as an inspiration to us all. Goodbye. Yes, good bye. I'm guessing a lot of quests will open up after the election debate. You step into what feels like a temporary lowland battle. You note a line, hand-drawn, separating one half of the room from the other. Welcome to Hunters and Collectors, mate. I'm Hunter, and that bloke with the fine mustache is Cole. What can I do for you? What can we do for you? He eyes Hunter while addressing you. We both got plenty of work for you. All you gotta do is promise you'll at least take a gander at the job board when you blow in with the dust. What's in it for me? Money for getting crap done. Good cardio for all the running around you'll be doing, and a sweet reputation here in Meriden. You got it. Fantastic. He leans towards you. Just between you and me, my jobs are official surveyors guild business. Far more engaging than the mindless poaching gigs my friend here offers, but... You want mindless? Go clean one of your bloody CDs. They scowl at each other. They break eye contact and focus back on you. Anyway... I have something you get stuck into. Quick smart. He gestures to a row of hunting rifles behind him. I run out these bad boys to help newcomers save up for their own, but some dags who call themselves the Mason Gang are avoiding me because their loan is up. I want you to head over to the Flaming Gala and bring back my guns, and the casings from any bullets they've wasted. You need to talk to Ian Mason and the Mercs he leads. They call Sultana, Ridgy Didge, and Aki.
job board. Various posters and bits of paper have been tacked up here for any willing and able bounty hunter to take on. This bounty poster for the Ripper has seen better days. The sketches are faded, but you can make out a large pendant. The poster itself has got to be 20 years old. Must be one hell of a grudge for Hunter to leave it still packed up. Alright, let's check in. Well, let's check in with Ruben. He's a familiar face. What's up, buddy? Uh, thanks for helping me make it back to town, mate. Yeah, sorry about your nugget. Alright, let's talk to Hunter. Hey, here for some more work? Got any jobs for me? It's all on the job board, mate. Appreciate the enthusiasm, though. What do you know about the Ripper? He snarls. I know he banded a bunch of sick jerks together to rape and murder their way across West Oz. Riley's Rippers locked the entire town of Allenson in their homes and set the bloody place on fire. I even heard the Ripper himself would use a meat hook to slice open anyone who got in his way. He leans forwards. You see that jerk? You kill him on the spot. He'll be single-handedly making the world a better place. What do you do here? He adjusts his sunglasses. I manage our hunting and bounty contracts. If you want an animal dead or someone taken down a notch, I'll find the right people to get it done. So, like a mercenaries guild. Exactly. He does his best to stifle a laugh. Jerk. Are you and Cole good mates? Yep, he's my best friend of, oh, 20 years? He smiles fondly. We met during a trip to Mount Sterling. I was looking under rocks for bugs, then he had the gall to tell me off for crushing a beautiful specimen of nature. That beautiful specimen would have given him necrosis, but he didn't care. Bloody idiot. Looks over at Cole, grinning. What have you got for sale? The rifles. Some spears. A yellow hood. If she's safe from a mean sunburn, boost plus 20 critical hit chance. Bye. Swing past whenever. Wait. Cole. He turns away from a bookcase stacked with old DVD cases and glass jars to greet you. Sorry about that. I get lost in my own world when I'm dusting these beauties. What do you do here? He smooths out his mustache. Well, on top of being Meriden's official rep for the Surveyor's Guild, I'm a collector of memorabilia from before. Really? Uh, what kind of memorabilia? Oh, newspapers, music, fridge magnets, you name it. The next from before tell us what was in vogue back then. It shows us what people valued, what they enjoyed, what the world used to look like. He shrugs. I like to connect with history. Remember those who died in the bombings. You and Hunter argue a lot. He calls out to Hunter. Hey Hunter, this one here thinks we argue. Hunter laughs. We like to poke fun at each other, sure, but we don't argue. We're best mates. Always have been, always will be. What have you got for sale? The cream Outback hat. It's half the price of the camo Outback hat that we saw. So it keeps the sun out of your eyes, boosts plus 1 AP and plus 1 MP. So half the effect, half the price. That's fair. And a brown Outback hat. Keeps the sun out of your eyes, boosts 3 AP. That'd be good for a sniper, since they shouldn't have to move around as much. And also you get 3 points versus the 2 or the 4. Pretty consistent pricing. Do appreciate that. The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. Hey, go nugget! It was once Rubens, but now it's yours. Well, it's not mine. A wisdom consists of knowing how to distinguish the nature of trouble and in choosing the lesser evil. Page 102. And an opal. Shiny. Be straightforward. Bye bye. Take care. Hey, we have another quest. I think we'll knock that out real quick. I also didn't find the parts we need for the quest I currently have active. Uh, the use of spies. 
We've got... Oh, we actually got a quest for that. Okay, I can do that. Let's start with this. Let me knock that out real quick. Uh, Wilkins was down this way. Not mistaken. Yeah, right there. We got a few bucks to spare. That's just meat. Does he have actual steaks or can it just be meat? If I have meat on hand, but it wants me to actually buy it, so we'll take one. Oh, it's this guy right here, Hudson. This poor man stares at Wilkins' stall with hungry eyes. His dream of having a whole steak to himself is clearly at the forefront of his mind. So, I tried to talk to him earlier, it wouldn't let me. So I guess I had to buy a steak to progress this quest. Also, I felt bad for him earlier, so I'm glad that I could resolve this. Here, give him a steak. He can barely believe his good fortune. He takes the steak from you with trembling hands, unable to even utter a word of thanks. He hurries away to devour his prize. Neat. Uh, did I level up off that? Close to. Not quite. Alright, our next quest is going to take us to this group of delinquents, I think. Okay, they all have names now. But we'll save that for next time. I call it here for now. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.